This is an example of a working solution to the Hops Head High pupil management database. So as you can see, we uh, start the program with a main menu, and the main menu uh, tells us of the different features that the program provides. And to run any one of those features, we simply have to enter the corresponding number. So if we want to just start by looking at all of the pupils in the database, we would enter number one and press enter. And because we've just started using the database, there are no pupils in the database. So this is an example of robust design. Um, rather than crashing or, or just showing some nonsense, um, the program has the ability to detect there are no pupils and gives an appropriate error message. And it's asking us to press enter to continue, which will take us back to our friendly main menu. OK, so let's move on to option two and actually add some pupil details. I enter a number two, press the enter button, and I'm asked to enter the first name of the pupil. Uh, let's do Bob. I press enter, it goes on to ask for the surname, uh, Jones, and it asks me to enter a date of birth, and it tells me the format that I need to use. So let's say 2nd of February 2002. Oh, it's told me 02. So there we go, there's a nice simple date of birth. Press enter. And it takes me straight back to the main menu. That maybe could have been improved by saying something like pupil added uh, and asking me to press enter to continue again. So we've entered a pupil. So let's go back now to option one and see all of our pupil details. Enter number one. And you can see now we don't get told that there's no pupil. Instead, we get a table. And the table has a few useful features. Firstly, it's well laid out. This uh, column here, this is our number. Then we've got the first name, surname, and the date of birth. And again, it says press enter to continue. So let's do that, and it will take us back to the main menu. So let's add another pupil and see what happens when we've got more than one. So let's have maybe Mary uh, Harris. And Mary could be born on the 1st of January 2002. Okay, so now let's look at our table. And we've got Bob and we've got Mary. Okay, let's go to the main menu and look at some of the other features we've got here, which include saving and loading files. Uh, so let's press enter to go back to our main menu. And I'm gonna just show you now uh, the folder that this program is running in because that'll be useful when we save a file, it'll prove the file has been made. So this is the folder with the, uh, where my program's running and it's just got the Python file in it at the moment. Uh, in a moment, we're gonna save our pupil details and you'll see an additional file being created. So, let's just remind ourselves, these are our pupils, we've got two pupils and we want to save them now to file. So we're gonna press number three and we're asked to enter a file name for the data. So let's choose something like pupils Dot, and I'm going to use CSV, which stands for Comma Separated Values. And I press Enter. And let's see, if we go back to our folder, let's see if it has indeed created that file. And yes, it has. And there it is, pupils.csv. And if I want to, I can double click on that file. And because it's a CSV file, it's actually going to open in Microsoft Excel. And there is my data. First name, surname, date of birth, Bob Jones, Mary Harris. Excellent. Let's close that for now and go back to our program. Uh, so let's try now adding a, another people. Let's do Terry Marks. And he might be born on the 12th of March 2002. And let's look again at our list. Now we've got three in there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load the pupils from a file. And this should actually ask us to overwrite the existing data. Uh, so we saved the file with just Bob and Mary. So if we load the file, it should get rid of Terry. So let's do that. Four. And it gives us a warning. Again, robust design. This is here to prevent users from making mistakes. So it says, caution. Loading pupil details will overwrite any existing data in the database. Are you sure you wish to do this? 
At this point, we may want to back out and enter no, in which case it takes us back to the main menu. However, let's say we actually do want to overwrite that data. So let's go back, load the pupil files again, and this time let's say yes, we want to do this. Notice as well, we're telling the user what input we're expecting, Y or N. So they're not confused as to whether they should write yes or write no. They know to write Y or N. And actually, we've built in a little bit of additional robustness by allowing capitals and lowercase as responses. So if I put a capital yes, it should work just fine. Right, please enter the name of the file you wish to load the data from. Well, our file is called pupils.csv, so let's enter that. pupils.csv, enter. And it tells us it's processing each of the pupils it's found, and it says data has been loaded. Let's press enter to continue. So if this has worked, if we show all the pupil details again with option number one, we should only see Bob and Mary's details. And indeed, that's exactly what we've done. We've overwritten the database with the data that was in our file. And because our file only contained Bob and Mary, we've lost the details of Terry. We can play with this a little bit more, actually, because remember I said we can open this file in Excel. So let's load it up one more time. And let's add some data inside Excel. So maybe let's have Ginny Jones. Uh, Jenny could be born on the 30th of September uh, 2001. And let's save our file. Now let's load it up again. Yes, I want to load the file. I want to use pupils.csv. And if we show our pupils now, Jenny Jones has been entered into our database. So, uh, so far, that's all of the main features, and we've proven with our testing that our program works as expected. But we haven't done any destructive testing to prove that it works, um, that it can handle any mistakes, that it works even if we put the wrong values in. In other words, we haven't proven that it's a very robust program yet. So to do that, let's try a few uh, ways of breaking it. So, the first obvious way is we've got one, two, three, four, five options in our menu. So, let's try putting in option six and see what happens. And it just asks us to enter the number for our chosen option again. Okay, what about minus two? All right, it's pretty good. What about 1.0? Because technically that's one. But actually it's not option one, is it? It's just the number one. Okay, we've not broken it by putting different numbers in. What about a really, really big number? Nope, it seems to be working with that as well. Um, what about words? Because it, it can handle numbers, but what about if I, what if I type in option one? Hmm. Okay, what about some symbols? What about if we type nothing in whatsoever? So as you can see, actually, my input method here is really robust. It's handling all sorts of different types of erroneous and invalid data. Okay, what about inside, maybe when we, um, when we add a pupil? What about if I don't enter a first name? Ah, if I leave it blank, it recognizes that, and it keeps asking me to enter that first name. Okay, well, then I will. John. Now, what about the surname? No. I can't leave that blank. Okay, what about Smith then? Let's do John Smith. What about the date of birth? No, it, it again knows if I've not typed anything in to ask again. So let's put in a date of birth. Let's try the 21st of August uh, 2002. And that should have worked. Yeah, there's John Smith added to the list. Um, so, one thing it doesn't do, however, is asked us to put that date of birth in in the right format. But actually, what if we don't do that? What if we do, uh, let's add a new pupil. Um, let's put in uh, Mark Johnson. And what about if we break the system? What if we do 2nd September 2001? 
Mm. Let's see what happens now. Ah, it's allowed us to enter that data. So there's one way in which our database could be made to be a little bit more robust because we haven't put any validation to check that the format of the data is correct. Let's look about some of the file handling because things can go really wrong with files. So let's try saving again uh, a file name and let's not put a file name in. Okay, so again, it knows you would, we need to type something in. Um, what about if we type what we had before, pupils.csv again? That seems to have worked, so let's check our file. And pupils.csv, if I open it up, ah yes, it has overwritten the data in the old pupils.csv. So there's an area for improvement. If the file already exists, maybe it could warn us and tell us, hey, you're about to erase a file that you've already made. Are you sure you want to do that? What about if we try and load a file that doesn't exist? Uh, so, oh, and what about this, actually, this, this prompt, are you sure you wish to do this, yes or no? What about if I just don't type anything or I type a load of rubbish? Okay, it seems pretty robust, so let's go yes. Okay, uh, enter the file that we want to load the data from. Uh, we've always used pupils.csv so far. What about if I type in um, uh, school data.csv? There is no file called school data.csv. So in theory, this should crash or it should tell us it can't find the file. And indeed it does. Error, no file with that name could be found. So again, that's pretty robust. That's worked pretty well, actually. It hasn't crashed by trying to open a file that doesn't exist. Instead, it's told us it can't find a file with that file name. And it gives us the option to press Enter to return to the main menu, uh, which is really nice, because if it just returned straight to the main menu, we'd never see that error message, and we wouldn't know if it worked or not. So when you're, when you're presenting some information that the user really, really does need to see, it's really good to get them to have to act somehow uh, before the program continues. So that takes us back to our main menu and that's all of the features shown. You can see how you can use the system to add details, to show details, to save details, to load details. So this is fulfilling all of the requirements that um, we've been set in our scenario and it's doing it in a pretty robust way. It's designed defensively, ready to handle errors. and. Um, but there are elements of improvement, so we can evaluate it and we can look at it um, and say, you know, there are ways that we could, we could make it better. Final thing just to test, does it quit when we enter number five? Yes, it does. There you go, it's finished. So that's the end of this worked example. Hopefully by going through this, you will now have a, a really clear understanding of how you could imagine that you could implement um, a system based on a written scenario. Now, if you want to create yours in a different way, it doesn't have to look like this one, that's absolutely fine. Um, but while you're just getting started and you're just practicing, you might want to follow and try and recreate this system, so uh, including all of the sort of error handling, um, because it might just help you make sure that you've, you've gone through a really thorough process. But if you want to design your own way with different options and so on, as long as those options are fulfilling what's in the scenario, you could use different words or you could put them in different orders or the way that you might choose the option from the menu might be different. And that's up to you. It's your project. You can design it and be creative with it. Um, and in the real thing, you won't have an example like this. You just have to invent it, design it, and make it in your own way. But hopefully you found that useful. And uh, now we just need to get on with actually making it.